So, the Computor. This is a Raspberry Pi laptop that I've had bouncing around my head for a couple of years now. The screen is a SunFounder 10-inch touchscreen, so you can drag squares directly on your desktop. But there's a mouse, too, in case, you know, you're old school about your squares. Here I'm trying to show the virtual terminal keys, but the computer's being slow. There we go, there's top and number two. And back to the desktop. Here's the keyboard. There's the trackball up close. You can see it changes colors every time I push one of these layer keys. Function, symbols, and numbers. Each color corresponds to the symbols, colors on the keys. Here's the virtual terminals in slightly better detail and speed. There's a music layer as well. Currently configured to play like a bass. But you can change the intervals. Here's a demo of how I did all the keys. That is with a Sharpie. And it'll probably smear, or it'll rub off, but it doesn't actually matter. It's just Sharpie. This, incidentally, is the ASMR portion of the video. And so I'm going to talk about the next part and whisper that the whole thing Curly packets are really difficult. And now a word from our sponsor. This is a key that I marked up probably a year ago because I wanted to see how easy it was to clean after having been written on for a long time. And as you can see, it comes right off. So even if things do get blurry or smeared or whatever, I can always go back to, back to blank keys. This is the key used in the previous clip, by the way. Laptop hinges are called torque hinges. I did not know this until I built this. It makes them a lot easier to find when you know that. Sometimes they're also called friction hinges. I decided to use wire wrap rather than solder to the Raspberry Pi's GPIO header, just in case I wanted to plug something in. 
I use wire wrap wires to connect the rocker switches on the front panel to the monitor board as well. They're all sort of fed through that little hole. Wiring was kind of a pain. The case of the laptop is made from mahogany, milled on the CNC. It was just about all that my machine could handle to do this. The bed itself is not much bigger. All these screws are held in by inserts. I was originally going to use wood screws, but realized I'd be taking them in and out so many times that I'd just destroy the screw holes. I'm glad I thought of that, because I've taken these screws out a lot. You can see the top plate, both sides. The bottom is just flat. Just about every part of this could be done on a 3D printer, if a person was so inclined and had a printer with this kind of capacity. The bottom half of the laptop is not actually important to its function. You could run the whole thing with just the head. And here you can see the keyboard matrix and the microcontroller that runs it. The ribbon cable in the hinge is a 10 conductor silicone ribbon cable. I think it's like 28 gauge. And originally I thought that the power was going to be a problem, but it doesn't really warm up. The hinge cable has the power lines, the speaker lines, and the USB cable all running through it. And so far they haven't interfered with each other much. I guess I should also mention that this computer doesn't have a battery. Battery technologies come and go, but 12 volts is forever. I'd share the STL files if anybody's interested in building one of these. Every part should be 3D printable, and it actually went together fairly quickly. Probably the most tedious part of this whole thing was waiting for the oil finish to dry. And that's about it. A year and a half of work summed up in eight minutes. Thanks for watching, everybody.